Hello beautiful beings who are joining me now live or in the future now moment. Just give me a moment I need to put my glove back on now that I've started the feed. <laughs> Let's see. Hello. Un momento. I'm just putting my glove back on. <laughs> It's cold here in New York. It's about 45 degrees, maybe colder. Who knows? <laughs> I've got my winter coat on because it's the only warm coat I have here. So hello everyone from this beautiful little forest area. I've been inside for days because <laughs> it's been rainy and it's finally not raining today. Uh, so. I felt like coming out for a stroll in nature and I got recharged by this incredible tree. And so I'm feeling like I have the energy now to to deliver this this message that I started a few days ago in one of my posts. So hello everyone, Sean, Alyssa, Stefan, Leaf, Rachel, I see you there, Michaela, hello everyone. Cool. So Let's talk about the moon. Let's talk about the sun, the soul. <sighs> Let's have some fun. So I think I'm gonna sit down here if it's not too wet. Awesome. <sighs> hey, Latoya in Sweden. We got Hawaii, Spain, all of these amazing places in the house. Awesome. Good morning, Stanley. Ah, so where to begin in this in this dialogue is really the question. <laughs> um, something that I've been aware of my entire life was the presence of the moon. And obviously we all have been, that said, I've been aware of it not in the way that most people have. I've always kind of been like uh, weary of the moon. When I was a little girl, I used to sleep in my parents' bed on full moons and I would say that there were beings on the moon that were out to get us and that they could find me during full moons. <laughs> While this won't be a dialogue about the beings that are on the moon because uh, that doesn't feel timely, uh, this will be a dialogue about the moon, about the lunar lords, about the solar lords, and about the shift that humanity is currently in in our evolution and I've been speaking a bit about that shift about the evolution that we're on as far as our purpose here our purpose to evolve the human species forward from a species that has been a individualized separate species very much personal and ego driven very much operating on the astral and emotional planes to a species of human beings that are soul driven, solar, spirit, are unified in Christ consciousness and uh, operating on the mental, the mental plane. And so the important piece, I think I titled this why I will no longer be attending moon ceremonies is because something that I tuned into when I was in Mexico, uh, the Mayans actually presented this transmission to me when I was in a cave in uh, Tulum and it started actually when I was in anyways I won't even go into the long details of where this started and how this was a pretty much like a month and a half long transmission that was coming through uh, and Emily Benson who just joined beautifully guided me through a hypnosis to bring back some of these memories of the moon and uh, while those are neither here nor there to share in this moment, I think the most important pieces to really touch on is what are the lunar lords? What does our moon represent? Our moon represents uh, emotions. We all know this from astrology. You can look at your the moon in your natal chart and, and see that the moon is representing your emotions. Our emotions operate on what's called the astral plane or the astral body of the lower forms of man. And so our lunar lords are the lords of the personality of the self of the lower the lower three planes of man and so our moon was essentially brought into our orbit when we were really anchoring in this 
third dimensional mentality of separate selves, separate individualized selves so that we could learn the ego, so that we could learn about uh, being an individual. You know, the, the third dimension is perfect for the third dimension. There is nothing bad or wrong when you zoom out, as I was just talking to Azria Cohen, you're talking about zooming out and looking at this whole transmission from a uh, zoomed out perspective, it's all perfect, right? So everything that's gonna be shared is absolutely perfect. So in that space, the, the moon was brought into our orbit. It hasn't always been in this Earth's orbit, and this isn't something that has anything to do with spirit. You can look into science, and scientists will, will say the same thing. The moon hasn't always been here. The moon is actually older than the Earth, and uh, it's hollow on the inside. So you can have any conspiracy theory you want about that. There is a lot of information that we could talk about as far as all of the conspiracies around our moon. The key pieces to just dive into really are the emotions and the astral body. And it's important to be aware that the astral plane is a plane that is highly traversed by the Black Lodge or the Black Magicians or the beings that work with dark forces for their creation, for their creative energy. And those beings work on the astral plane, the emotional plane. And so the moon is highly represented uh, in the schemes of black magic. There is a lot of black magic that is done around the time of a full moon and a new moon and uh, the openings between the astral plane and the physical plane during a full moon are rather potent. And I've actually come into a deeper awareness that a lot of the native traditions that practice full moon rituals are actually not trying to connect to the moon. They're actually trying to protect themselves from the portals to the astral realm that are opened during a full moon, which is an interesting thing to note because as we start to go into these deeper ancient traditions, we're starting to bring them up again and there is a miscommunication that's happening in that realm. And that's designed because there is an invested interest to keep humanity separate on this planet, to keep humanity in the segregated, personalized, unevolved species of humans because that species is easy to be controlled and is easy to be inflicted with fear and pain and suffering when we're separate. When we're unified, it's very hard to control us. It's very hard to manipulate and to instill fear into our field. So now that we've touched on this, the moon is unique experience in the emotional realm, the astral realm, the black magicians, and all of that such, and the personal self. If you ever went to see an astrologist, they would look at your personal planets. The moon is a personal, uh, it represents your emotions, your personal emotions. Whereas, as far as our solar logo, so if we're talking about our sun now, the sun as far as our solar system is re is involved is the soul of our solar system so if we were to look at the entire universe as a depiction of god or of spirit and it was just this giant body every solar system is essentially an organ to look at it in reflection of the human body of that god or spirit and so our solar system is an individual living organism and all planets and stars and constellations within our solar system are a living breathing organism that works together and so our solar system the Sun is the soul of that so as we evolve now here bringing it back down to the microcosm as we evolve in our earthly plane and humans evolve forward we talk about the evolution of humanity is the connection to the soul and the bringing down of the souls to be back in body and form to unify us to connect to Christ consciousness and it's not only planet earth that is evolving our entire solar system is moving to a new part of the astro belt and that is what the evolution that is happening is all about so if we want to connect to the evolution of planet earth and we're talking about connecting to our human soul, well, zoom it out to the macrocosm. How do we connect to the human soul? We connect to the soul of our solar system, which is our sun. The solar lords, the, uh, 
devas of the sun our are not our are the beings that are holding the essential blueprint for our solar system's evolution and for Earth's evolution and Jupiter and Mars and all of the other planets and Pleiades and Sirius and all the other constellations that are part of our neighborhood. If we say our solar system, our, our Milky Way as our neighborhood. They're all things in our neighborhood, essentially. So in that regard, connecting to our soul, that's what we're talking about in human form. Okay, how do we evolve beyond the ego? Well, we want to connect to our higher self. We want to connect to our soul. Well, what is our soul? Our soul is the sun. Our personality, our separate self, is the moon. So the more we connect and direct our focus towards the moon, the more that we are actually hindering our evolution on a larger scheme because we're continuing to connect to the personality to the individual self. I've never been to a, a full moon ceremony that has been talked about manifesting things for the collective. It's always been a focus on, and maybe this is just the places that I've gone to. I haven't gone to a whole lot of full moon ceremonies because it's not something that I've been really f driven towards. Uh, that said, the ones that I do go to, it's about manifesting something for yourself. Like using the energy of the full moon to manifest something for yourself. Essentially what you're tapping into is the, is the black magic that the portals that are opened during full moon times. And essentially, if we want to shift this planet from darkness into light, it, it sounds most auspicious to shift towards working with the white lodge and the solar over the lunar and the personal and the black lodge and the astral plane. And, uh, so if anyone has questions as I am, uh, speaking about this, please feel free to, to leave them in the comments and I'll tune into them as they come. So what does that look like, right? What does that look like for our embodiment uh, as human beings? Well, I have a practice daily of, of sending my energy out to the center of the sun and the center of the sun is our solar heart. Uh, and at the center of our earth is the solar heart within our earth, just like we have our sacred heart. It's also called the sacred heart, the sacred solar heart. And our thymus gland. You hear me talking a lot about that heart because it's so important. And if we connect every single day to the center of the sun and to the center of the earth, because essentially the sun holds the codes for the earth's evolution. The sun holds the codes for the entire solar system's evolution. The sun is the soul that's driving that ship. It's the higher self of our solar system, essentially. If you can look at it from language that we use as humans. Because remember, we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. And our solar system is, again, a microcosm of the larger macrocosm of the universe. So we're all reflecting. And so we can look at these teachings of our solar system and take them into human form and really embody them here. Hello, Christine and all other beings who've joined, joined the feed now. Welcome. So uh, connecting to the sun daily, to the heart of the sun, and what I like to do is I imagine that I open up my channels and I send this golden, golden thread up to the center of the sun. And then I breathe that down in through my roots and I send it down into the center of the earth so that there's this golden thread that's connecting the center of the earth to the center of the sun through this vessel as the channel that's bringing that energy down through and uh, breathing that energy down through and connecting and instilling and breathing the energy and the light codes of the sun the soul the solar into our planet daily as a daily practice and especially during times of eclipses and things like that how uh, there are a lot of different beliefs that are out there and I won't touch too much on the conspiracy theories or my personal beliefs as far as why this moon was brought into our uh, solar system because that's really neither here nor there. That's that you can go on and find a tremendous amount of information about this, the moon and when it was brought into our orbit and the fact that we have a a, a form that continues to block our light codes from entering our planet every single day is already a cause to question its existence. Like why would we want something in our planetary field that's blocking our, our source of energy, our source of, of life, our soul essentially. 
So especially during times of eclipses and things like that, when the sun is blocked, that's a time to really connect to the sun's energy instead of admiring the moon for it blocking our light codes, for it blocking our source of energy. And um, just to bring it back full circle, for those of you who have just joined, hello, Sazik and Joe, and oh, with my gloves, I can't scan the feed. <laughs> Touch screen doesn't work with my gloves. And it is chilly cold here in New York because I have been recently, I watched the solar weather. I don't watch the weather on the news, uh, the Matrix news. I watched the solar weather report that they put up on um, lovehasone.org. They do a solar weather report there. And uh, the solar weather report is that the part of the sun that is facing the East Coast is currently asleep. There are no solar flares. And so that's why we have uh, winter-like experiences happening on the East Coast right now. And I think even like Southern New York, they're, they're getting snow reports in the forecast. And it's predicted to rain for another week here, uh, which is unseasonable weather. So uh, look to the solar weather report if you even want to know what's actually happening to our planet because it's a direct source of our energy, of our life, of our heat, of our, of our soul. So uh, for those of you just joined, I was talking about how our moon is a representation of the emotional body, of the astral plane, and of our personal individualized self. The lunar lords are the lords that govern the three lower planes of man. And the three lower planes of man are, are going to be very personal, separate, individualized, separate, separate keywords, separate, <laughs> egoic forms of man. Whereas our higher forms of man, our soul, our higher self, when we open up our higher channels, we connect to our higher self, we connect to our soul. That's governed by the solar lords or the devas of the sun, the soul of our solar system. And the belief that I hold so true in my heart and what I connect to the purpose of humanity right now and the purpose of all of these truly incredible beings that are on this planet right now is that we're here to evolve the human race forward because the solar system is evolving forward. Oh, I just dropped my little pieces. Selenite. Here it is. <laughs> Carrying this little guy around today, blessing it up with some earth energy. Uh, so anyways, the purpose of our presence here is to evolve the human race forward and that is for so many of us looks like healing fear healing the human body bringing people together ending separation by sex and gender and, and race and your sexual preference and your religion and your philosophy and your belief all of the things that have kept us separate all of the emotions that have kept us separate all of the separation is governed by the lunar lords the lords of the moon and so when we want to bring humanity together and connect us to unity, Christ consciousness, which is the same thing as unity consciousness, is uh, just a different language for describing the energy that we're talking about of oneness, of recognizing that we're all spirit, we're all energy in form, and there literally is no separation between Jessica and Anna and Mustafa and Emily and Tazik and all these people that are looking like it's hard to understand sometimes because we look like we're separate, right? I have this body that looks like Jessica and, and all the other people who are on here. Leaf has his body that looks like Leaf and, you know, we all have our own bodies that appear to be separate. And that's how we learn is through the duality we learn about oneness. And so we're at that moment of evolving where we're learning about oneness. We're learning about the soul. We're, we're bringing humanity back to our true essence, which is a connected species. You know, the Lumerians that were on this planet, they were all very much connected. They were here embodied in their light body. There was no gender. There was no separation in that realm. And so we're bringing through our evolution that truth, the truth of our solar system, back to this planet. And in order to do that, we must really connect to the solar lords, to the soul of our solar system, to our souls. You know, I've said this time and time again, if you want a, if you want to see your soul, and I would show you right now, except for we have these massive thick layers of clouds in the sky, which another reason why I'm feeling called for this message right now is for us all to just focus our awareness on the sun and maybe it will peek its head out. <laughs> um, so if you want to see what your soul looks like, 
you look at the sun because that's a mirror example of what your soul looks like. The power and the energy of your soul is the sun because the sun is a soul of our solar system. And so really this whole movement that I guess it just came through, this wants to be a movement of shifting our awareness from the, the lunar lords, from honoring and worshiping the moon. And it, it's, it's not that the moon is bad or wrong. You can still have your rituals and have your ceremonies and have those parts of yourselves. Uh, <laughs> yes, Michaela, it's working. Uh, you can still have those parts of yourself. It's just inviting in this connection to the sun because so few of us are are deeply connected and having uh, having ceremonies and spending time connecting to the sun regularly like we we kind of take it for granted that it's in like literally the sun loves us so much that it shines every single day even though the clouds are up it is still shining on this earth on new york right now on the east coast on the entire world even though we can't see it, it is there shining brightly never letting go of its love for this planet, for all of the planets and all of the stars that are in the solar system. It never loses its purpose to shine its light and its energy and its codes on all of us. And so that's something that we can sometimes take for granted. And, you know, I go through these these moments when I'm, I'm traveling to places like being in Tulum and the sun was shining literally every single day. Being in Hawaii, you could drive... If the sun wasn't shining on one part of the island, you could drive 20 minutes and there'd be sunshine. And then you come back to places uh, like one of my, I've had clients who are in England and places that are cloudy for months of the year and upstate New York where we get cloudy for weeks and months of the year. You really take for granted what the sun is. And so allowing us to connect, like I have felt sad being here like sad like some my energy has been super low and I've just been feeling like there's something that's been missing from the sun's presence not being seen and when the sun comes out I like run to it and so what is that that we're missing when the sun's not here we're missing that connection to our soul to and and whatever the soul means to you the soul is is what unites us the soul is the heart of our existence you know, that thing that transcends time and space, that moment when you're in your meditation and you go someplace where you're no longer identified in your body, you're going to this like blissful, love-filled space, like that's your soul. So that's what we're missing when the sun's not here. And so connecting to it, allowing humanity to shift from the personalized, from the separate sense of self that is the lunar to the solar, to our soul is the shift that we're on this planet for currently right now because whether we want to link it into spiritual terms or we look at it from a scientific perspective our galaxy our solar system is evolving the vibration of our earth is continuously rising planets are aligning in ways that they only align once every hundreds of thousands of years and we're moving into a faster vibration on the astro belt, a higher vibration, whatever words we want to use for it. And so we're evolving and we can be stuck in that mentality of believing that nothing is going to change or we can just accept that, hey, even if we look at <laughs> this beautiful little white feather is flying through the sky right now. Hello, angel. <laughs> it's like dancing. Oh. So the solar devas are here. <laughs> so we can pretend like nothing's going to change or we can just embrace the fact that this earth has been evolving since the what some may call the history, the the patriarchal history even has, you know, you you learned in school about Pangea when the earth was all together and whether you believe that or not, it even just shows just that thought that we change. This earth evolves, the land shifts, the waters shift, the poles shift, it happens. And so to be blindsided to the fact that we are evolving right now is really discrediting the, the beauty and the power of being alive right now. Like what an amazing opportunity and gift to be on a planet when it's evolving, to be informed, to be able to experience and taste and feel evolution. 
wow, right? Or at least that's at least how I personally perceive it. Like, wow, what a gift. Yes, we're experiencing crazy weather shifts and devastating experiences. But when we zoom out, we zoom really far out and we look at this moment, we can see what a gift it is. And so to just keep this short, cause I'm gonna go back to like really loving up this opportunity to be outside because it's supposed to rain the rest of the week here. Uh, just allow yourself to connect to the sun regularly and to bring the energy of the sun down through your body and into the core of the earth, the core of the earth, the crystalline core of the earth. You can still do your meditations with the moon. Just know what you might be drawing in during those meditations. Just be aware, educate yourself on the energies of the astral plane. I've posted articles about this before and maybe I'll repost it now that I'm in the feed of this video about the Black Lodge and the White Lodge and the astral plane and the mental plane and what is happening. You know, educate yourself on what's going on in, in, in the logos, the solar logos. It's a powerful time to, because information is available. So educate yourself on it. So as I wrap this up, and I've said that several times, I'm actually going to do that now. <laughs> Allow yourself to pull on the energy of the sun through your body into the earth daily and ground that energy into this earth. Bring your soul down into your body spend time gazing at the sun at sunrise and sunset and if you have some quality sunglasses i mean i stare at the sun even when it's high in the sky without sunglasses on and i have better than 20 20 vision so don't listen to what anyone says that the sun damages your eyes if you believe that the sun is going to damage your eyes it will for sure damage your eyes if you know in your heart and soul that that sun is your beneficial presence and it's energizing your body mind and spirit when you look at it it won't damage your eyes so long as you don't believe it's going to so allow yourself to connect with the sun don't be afraid of it. its power follow the sun open your heart like the solar sacred heart and allow our 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 species to be evolved for the benefit of all all beings will benefit from the benefit of human species so let's do this let's connect to our soul let's bring the soul down into the body and be spirit Mwah. i love you all so much if anyone has questions about this who wants to share any information feel free to reach out to me at any time Oh, a group of little kids are coming down now. Perfect timing. So, I need to take off my glove to stop this. <laughs> so apologize. Much love to you all. Bye.